What's going on guys? Once again, it's a couple of nights after Street Outlaws and I've kind of just been soaking in the episode, I guess you'd best way to say it, and trying to figure out what I wanted to say about it. Because in ways it was, you know, a better episode, but what I'm about to say is 100% my speculation and it does kind of go along with what happened Monday night and it is the part that I liked the most. Even the OKC guys, for a while now, it would come on and it would go to two or three guys shop and they would just talk about the race that happened the week before and then they would just go to race night. And while that sounds like it would be a good idea, it's just more drama at race night where, you know, I personally, you know, back in the day, you know, it would show them traveling there and it would, you know, show them working on the cars. It would show them, you know, talking about upgrades, you know, just different things. And this episode, it was an odd time. It was like an hour and 11 minutes is what my DVR recorded. But it had a lot that led up to the race. You know, it come on with Doughboy going down the road and his phone rings and it's the, you know, 901 Bad Boys. And, you know, I have watched them on social media and stuff, and they're fast, don't get me wrong, but like JJ said, they're track fast. And anybody can, you know, put a car on the street and, you know, make it go. It just may not be near as fast as what they're used to at the track. A lot of the things that JJ says make sense. They're really respectable, they're truthful, and, you know, I do feel like he is, in the big picture, giving a good message to everyone who, you know, does it you know, thinking about doing it, wants to do it, would like to do it, you know, and think, you know, just anybody that is interested or associated with racing or street racing. And last night was the biggest example of that. He gave Doughboy, you know, good, solid advice. And, you know, from what JJ was saying, the money and the people was a little rougher than the people they had raced in the past. And when you start adding up 10, 20, 30,000 dollars, you know, it could turn more into a fist fight. You know, somebody could actually die if it was not a organized street race. You know, that is a lot of money. People die for less every day. And I think that was the message he was trying to tell Doe. I like that. And I guess the reason why I picked up on it so much is, is it is because they had got away from it. And, you know, the 405 has got away from it way more than Memphis has, but you know, it was just refreshing to see it brought back. While I'm on the subject of the 405, just something kind of quick here. There has always been a lot of things going on, a lot of controversial stuff going on, um, you know, upgrades, races, no preps, fights, uh, different TV shows, all kinds of stuff that, you know, revolving the main people of the, you know, OKC bunch of Street Outlaws. And between, you know, these last couple of seasons, that hasn't been happening. You know, for the most part, other than no prep kings, everybody's been quiet. You haven't seen much. You know, you look on their social media and they're on vacation and just kind of doing what you would expect them to be doing. And I know that may seem normal, but it's not happened in the past. So it's just, it's almost kind of refreshing. It's like they're going back to normality and... You know, if they could bring back the normality of the first couple of seasons, I do think it would help the OKC bunch tenfold. But, you know, just a side note that I felt like I needed to say. So, but back to Memphis. JJ went to the hangout or the shop or whatever, the 901 Bad Boys, and, you know, they acted like he just walked in or knocked or whatever. But... You know, the camera was already in there when he come through the door. So it's not like they didn't know he wasn't coming because there was already a camera inside there filming him come through the door. So, you know, if you think about it like that, you know, kind of debunks the way he just walked in. But, you know, as far as the racing goes, same old racing that happens every week on Memphis Street Outlaws. They win every race and, you know, JJ gets as many bets as he can on the starting line and... You know, another one in the books. The, you know, obviously the biggest thing in the downfall was the bounty hunter flipping, totaling, destroying that S10. And, you know, while it sucks, S10s are a dime a dozen. So, 
you know, you even heard JJ say that, you know, we'll get you another one, not that bad, whatever. And, you know, that's part of it. And it's not like somebody owes him a car, owes him a truck. You know, that is the agreement you sign when, you know, put your suit on, put your helmet on, pull up there and let go of the trans brake. You are, you know, if you agree to race this guy, you agree to anything that may happen during that race. That's just as simple as it is. With Memphis Street Outlaws, there's so many routes that could be taken because the show is so young. All of the mistakes that the 405 had is behind them and they learn from them and they are where they are today. And where they are today is, I feel like, you know, less than three or four or five episodes away from it being the end where I feel like JJ could take that show different places. There are so many little outlaw shows that's going on now about racing, street racing, you know, a uh, car build up to a race, you know, things along them lines, um, you know, little outlaw television shows, it's got stuff like that. Um, you know, the one that I talked about a while back, the fastest cars in the dirty south, you know, they got uh, an allowance for X amount of episodes and, you know, I'd like to see that come back. You know, anything that involves something that an average person could obtain will sell more than, you know, $250,000, $300,000 cars. So that is my outlook on why Memphis, even with all the stuff that's happened, even with all the, you know, things that are going on and all that, why they are still successful. With me saying all that, there is something that I want to address, and it was not about this week's episode, but about the out west three episodes that happened and you know i kept saying that you know there just wasn't the right atmosphere something wasn't right um you know especially when memphis raced memphis it was just all different and i got an email from a young lady and I, i'm going to read the email you can kind of you know take it how you want to and i'm not going to say her name just because it is someone that you see around the cars on Monday nights. And, you know, she sent me pictures of herself there on race night, you know, on the streets of Memphis or on the streets of Las Vegas and you know, New Mexico, California and all that. She sent me pictures of all that kind of just to show her credibility. And I'm going to read it word for word and then we'll kind of, you know, talk about it, I guess. And it, and it, and it does take a minute, so just bear with me. Hey, Jeremy, we've never met, but I follow you and subscribe to your channel. Your post today has prompted me to send you this email. Real quick, kudos to you for your honest coverage and commentary regarding JJ and Street Outlaws, regardless of the backlash you get at times. Great job, keep on keeping on. My name is blank, and I was at the Vegas race. I'm in the first five episodes and know JJ and many of the racers, not just from MSO. And I thought I would let you know for whatever it's worth, your assessment and thoughts regarding Vegas were dead on accurate. Quite frankly, I will say that Vegas sucked big time. Hands down, no doubt about it. Vegas was the worst race. The whole entire thing from the beginning to the end of the night was off. And I mean, way off. Between the two of us, JJ actually got in a major disagreement and dispute with the producers right before the racer meeting and that set the whole tone for the entire evening. The vibe was horrible. The races were totally rigged that night. JJ was not on his game, etc. Let's just say it was a total cluster. There have been other races that people have sworn were fake or rigged, but weren't. However, regarding Vegas, that race was a bona fide BS deal all the way around. I have personal pics, videos, and edited footage of crap that would make your jaw drop. Just saying. Anyways, I thought I'd share this with you. Keep doing you and keep up the great work. Hope you have a great day. And, you know, I get emails like this a lot claiming to be somebody they're not or people claiming to know somebody that they don't. Their uncle's brother knew somebody and worked on his car and, you know, two years ago and or, or whatever. And, you know, I have to let a lot of those comments and emails and stuff just you know roll off because you know it's not true the ones that we see on monday nights that i do talk to you know i'm not worried about that just by reading her email 
you know, I felt like there was truth behind it, but she sent pictures of herself there, and, you know, I, I, there, there's no way that it could have been faked. I'll just put it that way. And, you know, I am a pretty good judge of things that I'm going to put out there. I'm not going to make a video that is just a lie for views. I'm not going to intentionally hurt anybody or any organization, you know, regarding this. I know I'm boring to stand here and watch. I, I know that. You know, I know that I've, you know, said a few things that could be taken wrong. I know that, you know, JJ himself has taken things that I have said wrong. And I have a lot of information that, you know, I feel like could hurt them a lot worse than anything that I have done in the past year and a half. And I simply choose not to put that information out there just because that's not what I set out to do when I started talking about street outlaws. So, you know, I say all that to say that people are noticing that the shows and the races are not the way they should be. I mean, you got a nitrous car that's spraying, you know, seven, eight hundred horsepower, you know, or, or more worth of nitrous and it's not even shooting a little flame out of the header, you know. That's a dead giveaway. And, you know, I don't think they think of stuff like this or they don't expect us to pick up on stuff like this, but, you know, we do. It is what it is. You know, everybody has a cell phone with a camera on it, and even though they sign a waiver saying that they're not going to take any pictures or video anything that goes on behind the scenes or before the show airs, they do. It does get leaked and people does find out about it. When you have, you know, five or six that's there every Monday night, and I have a couple of them that is calling me, telling me things that JJ or, you know, Memphis Street Outlaws does, and then you see, you know, see them talking about family. You know, they scream family, they scream family, but yet they're calling me behind their back and telling me things that went on. So, you know, and, you know, what do you say? What, what do I do? What, how do I handle that? You know, I'm not going to expose them. That's not what I'm out to do. They have other doors that are opening, you know, with nothing related to Memphis Street Outlaws. So, you know, I'm not going to expose them and, you know, in the future could hurt what they have going on. And, you know, I'm talking about multiple people. You know, I have a couple of hours of footage from one guy, the one that I talked about that you could hear JJ talk about and the, you know, the Chief and Sean show and all that. That's not who I'm talking about. The post that Precious made on Facebook about me talking to anybody and everybody that will listen or whatever, I have not reached out to any of these people. They have reached out to me, and that's not even who I'm talking about. And the guy told me he didn't care if I said who it was, but... Out of respect, I'm not going to, but, you know, I'm trying to decipher what to do with it, and I would like to know where the show's going. As far as the races that go on on Monday night on Memphis Street Outlaws, you know, flip a coin. Every race is the same. You know, every single one of them is the same. JJ says Memphis won by a bumper, never bet against Old Heavy, and they win 95% of the races that they race. You know, there's a few guys that are just on sometimes, like Don Ginger. You know, I'd love to see that car on the show. So, I'd like to see him come back. I do feel like there is things they could do, and I do feel like if they had a list, they would actually be a better team because they would be more competitive than what they already are. They're not upgrading their cars. They're not doing anything. And I feel like if they was pressuring each other, like brotherly love, to get faster, the show would get faster, and it would evolve into better racing. That's the best way I know to say it. It would stop all these small tire stock suspension cars that can run a 5.0 at the track coming on the street and thinking they can hang with somebody that they obviously can't. But I'm gonna end that rant right here. I do have a live feed that is gonna happen in the next day or so, depending on the rain. And it is some very, 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 very important information that if you are a fan of my channel at all, don't miss it. Um, follow me on Instagram. I may put something on there about when I'm going to do it. Uh, my Instagram is on the screen right now. Anything you want me to know, say, do, or have, 
My email address is across the screen along with my P.O. box. It is also at the bottom of the screen. All of my giveaways are still going. 500 bucks when I hit 50,000 subscribers. And, you know, the stuff sent to my P.O. box, 50 bucks. So, you know, it's still going. It's about to start raining. I can feel it hitting the roof, and you won't be able to hear nothing I say. I'm shutting this off right here. There wasn't a whole lot that happened racing-wise on Monday night's episode, so I used this time to link a lot of things that I wanted to talk about together and put it in one video. So thanks for watching. Godspeed, and I will see you in the next one.